Elite Dangerous Odyssey was featured in a recent issue of MCV. The article contained a lot of information we've heard previously, however there were a few new bits and pieces which I will look at here. Now aside from the ability to walk around, one of the things about Odyssey that has interested me the most is the new planetary tech. Dr. K. Ross, lead programmer for Stellar Forge, had a few details to share on that. Now, Stellar Forge, of course, just before we get to the quote, is the uh, engine, is the uh, program that basically generates the Milky Way galaxy and everything within it. This is what K. had to say. In Odyssey, we are changing the process in which we generate landable planet surfaces. Where before we had a generator for rocky surfaces and one for ice surfaces, which both took Stellar Forge inputs, we now have terrains and terrain materials of various different types and scales, which are deterministically selected and blended together depending on Stellar Forge driven properties of that planet. So, what Kaya seems to be saying here is that the new version of planets will be made up of more layers and more components than previous. This would explain why the released screenshots and footage of planetary surfaces look so good. Specifically, the details found in the ground textures along with the rock scattering really do stand out. But there seems to be a lot more to it than just that. She went on to say, Landable planets are still classified between rocky, icy, rocky ice, high metal content and metal rich depending on what emerges from the Stellar Forge simulation. But the terrains are dependent on those simulations values more than these discrete titles. Terrain space, style and combinations are mixed together, meaning there is a lot of variation within these classes. So essentially, uh, planets are more about just their titles. A planet might as well be a rocky planet for example, but there's now far more to it than just uh, basically layering it with rocky details. So, it means more variation, and this is fantastic news. It would go a long way to make exploration more interesting, at least that is on the planetary surfaces. Well, in space in general, really. Planets in Elite are of course a massive, massive thing. All of them are full of scale worlds. But so far, it hasn't necessarily followed that all of these worlds themselves would be especially interesting. In fact, it can be very difficult to locate a visually interesting world. So hopefully, these changes will improve that situation quite a bit. Across a planet, there is now a large scaled mask processed which determine different zones of types of terrain. The mask depends on the things like how gravitationally stressed the planet is, the crust thickness, and if the planet is or has been tectonically active. These zones mask out further subzones of terrain and material types and follow the patterns, or follow the flow patterns rather, laid out by the layer above it, creating a seamless landscape across the planet. So, not only will there be more variation, but the planets will continue to be built based upon a real world geology. Elsewhere in the article, a frontier touch on the scale of development for Odyssey. Now, it seems throughout most of its development, it has had 100 developers working on it, and this peaked at 140 developers. Monty pointed out that it would be reasonable to compare the scale of work done on Odyssey to that of a full game. Of course, 100 developers is a notable number for Elite because it's frequently been cited that this is the number of developers working on the game. Now, if Odyssey has had 100 devs on it, that really does explain the lack of significant content and updates over the past two years, basically because everyone, more or less everyone, was working on Odyssey. Whilst I'm still certainly sitting back to wait to see how things actually play out with Odyssey, this is still nonetheless a very good sign for the game. Looking forward to basically seeing more. Now, one other small detail that stood out from the article was in regards to the BGS. The background simulation, of course, is a huge aspect of Elite. It's what keeps all the pieces of the galaxy moving and to all intents and purposes guides and directs the entirety of the game's uh, civilization. Now, we've seen before, we've heard before, that the BGS will affect Odyssey and the settlements as well as the NPCs residing therein. However, details on the specifics of this have been fairly light. We do now have one new piece of information from the MCV article 
and this is in regards to NPC background chatter. Basically, the subjects that NPCs talk about amongst themselves and I guess to players as well would vary depending on the current state that the planet, the settlement and the star system is in. So for example, it might be in lockdown, it might be an outbreak, it could be in famine or war or any one of the many other variations of background simulation states. All of these will have an impact on what the NPCs have to say. So that's pretty much all the new information we have around Odyssey at the moment. If you do want to check out the M uh, MCV article yourself, do take a look at the link in the video description. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and girls next time.